What an enigma down in Atlanta. The top five quarterback first two weeks, not even in the top 15 the following three games. But Michael Vick second in fantasy points as far as quarterbacks go to just Peyton Manning the last two weeks. Hey, how are you? Happy Halloween, trick or treat. Hopefully lots of treats in week eight. The Reese's Pieces kind, the Kit Kat, all that good stuff. All right, this is the Chase Fantasy Football Series exclusively on CBS Sportsline. Today it's who's hot and who's not. CBS Sportsline senior fantasy writer Jamie Eisenberg will join me in just a sec. But let's start off with the newfound throwing machine in Atlanta. Michael Vick had just three touchdown passes, five total in the first five games if you include his two on the ground. He has seven alone in the last two weeks. His best two weeks as a quarterback in the NFL. Off a 291-yard performance against Cincinnati, his second-best throwing day in the last three and a half years. And look for another good one Sunday at Detroit. As we say hello to Jamie Eisenberg via satellite from Miami. Jamie, let's talk about Michael Vick here. What do you look for in the opposing defense when you're deciding whether or not to play him week in and week out? Does it really matter at this point? I mean, he's played so good the last two weeks. I mean, the only quarterback who's been better than him is Peyton Manning. Certainly you want to look at the matchups, obviously, with every team, with every quarterback, with every player. But Michael Vick is so good right now, he's really throwing against everybody, and he's making defenses tired by moving around in the pocket and running and throwing and finding receivers and finding Algie Crumpler. So certainly it really doesn't matter who he's playing. You've got to use him. You know, it's funny. When Vick has a good game, so too does Algie Crumpler. They go hand in hand. All right, let's get into the hot quarterbacks, Jamie. And we'll start with the guy who was unbelievable Monday night, Tom Brady, 372 yards, four touchdown passes, and Rex Grossman also hot. After that bad game against Arizona, he came back against the 49ers as the Bears put up 41 points in the first half. What about the cold quarterbacks? Well, it's a pair of guys who look like they're in a snowstorm. David Garrard, Bruce Gradkowski, and Matt Leinert, none of them had good games. And, you know, as far as the cold quarterbacks, the rookies and David Garrard look like they're playing more like rookies than they were the first couple weeks they were playing. Absolutely. I mean, those guys, you know, you certainly want to stay away from them because you know, they're just not reliable right now. I mean, Garrard stepping in for, for, for Leftwich, it's a situation where that offense really wasn't so prolific passing-wise to begin with, and now you have a guy who's not really experienced. He's going to run around, look to make plays, very similar to a Seneca Wallace, who has real no, no rhythm, no real pocket presence, and you don't really know what to expect from these guys on a week-to-week -week basis. You talked about Garrard real quickly, Jamie. Uh, if Garrard's the quarterback, does that change the value of any of the other Jaguars, receivers, or running backs as far as fantasy value goes? The running backs, no, because Fred Taylor and Maurice Jones-Drew have certainly been good. They've been productive. They were productive last week. In terms of the receivers, I mean, they really had no number one. Reggie Williams sort of established himself with Matt Jones injured, but now it sort of has gotten back into that group situation where you don't know if it's going to be Jones one week, if it's going to be Reggie Williams again, if it's going to be a situation maybe Ernest Wilford starts to pick it up, maybe the tight ends start to work themselves in. So you really have to devalue a lot of those guys. They're probably all about number three receivers in a fantasy perspective. All right, you talked about Fred uh, Taylor and Maurice Jones-Drew. Nobody at the running back spot has been as good as LaDainian Tomlinson and Larry Johnson. These two guys alone in the last week, seven touchdowns and 338 yards rushing. That was just on the ground. They also had receiving yards. Jamie, we've talked about this before as far as running backs go. If you didn't get, you know, first round 11, 12, maybe 10 running backs were taken in the first round. But of the top 20 fantasy players right now in most fantasy leagues, only five are running backs. Those two guys are towards the top. If you could go back and revisit it, would you reconsider how most people would draft at the uh, beginning of a fantasy season? I don't know if you reconsider it because running backs have so much value. I mean, you look at it, there's really only two or three quarterbacks that you would look at going into the season that would be considered to be taken in that top you know, 10, top 15 guys. The same thing with wide receiver running backs. If you can get one of those guys that aren't in a, in a, in a committee situation or a tandem situation, you want to grab one of those elite guys. The problem is if you miss, you miss big and it really hurts your team. So if you can get one of the elite guys and hit on them, you know, maybe you take a chance early on, on a Brian Westbrook thinking he's going to be a, a healthy guy, get a Tiki Barber and hope that he's going to get the touchdowns, which hasn't really played out this year. But you really have to take a chance on those running backs still regardless. Every year is going to be the same situation. Yeah, missing big would be guys like Carnell Williams and Ronnie Brown this year who haven't been very sure. good. All right, let's go to the cold running backs. Maurice Morris, Reggie Bush, Corey Dillon, and Corey Dillon, well, he didn't have any carries. He had a, got kind of sidelined with a little bit of an injury on Monday night. Just three carries, five yards, but next week should be a big week against the Colts. Let's go to the hot wide receivers. Reggie Wayne, three touchdowns, a career-high three touchdowns, his first three-touchdown game uh, of his career. Of course, Marcus Colston, a career day for him, 163 yards and two touchdowns. And his partner in crime, Joe Horn, back-to-back -back good games. The Saints duo, really, they really have a good duo for Drew Brees. How about the cold receivers? Terry Glenn, Anquan Bolden, and Braylon Edwards. And Braylon Edwards now just seven catches in the last three games. Jamie, as far as the wide receivers go that are cold, they're just products of their quarterback play right now, right? 
Absolutely. I mean, you know, you look at Terry Glenn, Tony Romo has a really good situation with Terrell Owens. They like each other. They like He likes throwing to, to Owens, so Glenn sort of suffers there. Bolden, even with Liner's first two games, he looked good, but it's just been a situation the last two weeks where it's sort of just, you know, fallen off a little bit. And then you're talking about Braylon Edwards, who sort of just suffered in that offense and that situation with Charlie Fry. You know, the situation, you know, you mentioned the, the Saints guys and how well they're doing. Marcus Colson has been such a surprise and such a pleasant surprise. I mean, he's in the top 10 of most fantasy leagues in terms of being a receiver. But this is going to be interesting the next couple weeks to see what happens because rookies, they usually hit that, you know, quote-unquote rookie wall. And if Colson can sort of play his way through that, Drew Brees loves him, and he's certainly been a good option as opposed to uh, uh, Joe Horn. Yeah, it happened to some of the running backs last year. Look out for uh, that to happen to Colson as well. But we have to see how, how to, uh, what to expect uh, in the next couple of weeks if he hits that wall. All right, Jamie, great stuff out of you down in Florida. And, folks, for all the fantasy advice you can handle, be sure to read everything from Jamie as well as Dave Richard only here on CBS Sports Line. Jamie, we'll talk to you real soon. You bet. Happy Halloween. Same to you. <laughs> All right, folks, that'll do it for Who's On, Who's Not here on the Chase Fantasy Football Series on Halloween. But don't forget about roster trends beginning on Wednesday and Stardom Sinem Week 9 beginning Thursday, November 2nd. I'm Jason Horwitz. Take care.